All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is VC Pramod. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses World Economic Forum's Davos Agenda Summit. Says this is the best time to invest in India. Voting in Punjab Assembly polls postponed to 20th February. Two Indians among three killed in a drone attack at Abu Dhabi Airport in UAE. Indian Embassy working with authorities to provide assistance. RBI says India's overall economic activity remains strong despite third wave of Corona. India's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 157 crore 91 lakh mark. Over 3.5 crore children in 15 to 18 age group receive first dose of vaccine. Jammu and Kashmir government issues 33.7 lakh individual health cards under Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana. India all set to host AFC Women's Asia Cup 2022 from Thursday. And in badminton, PV Sindhu to start her campaign in Syed Modi International Tournament in Lucknow today. As the number of COVID-19 cases is rising fast in several parts of the country, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and to get fully vaccinated and help others including children between 15 and 18 years get vaccinated with the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern. Please continue to follow the three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain two meters of distance for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID related information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 0112397 and 1075 As our nation celebrates its 75th year of independence a series of events are being organized by the government as part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav To commemorate the occasion as a Jan Utsav, All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in the morning news since 16th of August last year and will continue till 15th of August this year. India Post has joined hands as the logistics partner with All India Radio News for the Amrit Mahotsav quiz. Recalling our yesterday's question Name the freedom fighter who was greatly influenced by Mahatma Gandhi and pioneered the Swadeshi movement in Sikkim. The correct answer is Trilochan Pokhrel. Pokhrel is said to have stayed with Gandhi ji at the Sabarmati ashram in Gujarat. During his stay there, Pokhrel spent his time spinning the charkha and rendering his services for the ashrams and assisting the Mahatma in his daily affairs. He was so influenced by Gandhi ji's teachings and his lifestyle that he would visit his native village donning clothing similar to what Mahatma Gandhi wore this combined with his undaunted courage and spirited patriotism won him the epithet of Gandhi Pokhrel AIR news got an overwhelming response from its listeners across the world and the one lucky winner of the quiz is Neil Ratan Haldar from Gangtok Sikkim and coming to our 46th question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz in English Name the American journalist who reported about the British brutality perpetrated against peaceful satyagrahis at Dharsana Salt Depot during the civil disobedience movement. His reporting was credited for helping turn world opinion against British colonial rule of India. I repeat, name the American journalist who reported about the British brutality perpetrated against peaceful satyagrahis at Dharsana Salt Depot during the civil disobedience movement. His reporting was credited for helping turn world opinion against British colonial rule of India. Listeners can send their responses to the question over WhatsApp on 8826546262. I repeat 8826546262 or through email on amritmahotsavquiz at prasarbharati.gov.in. I repeat the email ID Amrit Mahotsav Quiz at Prasarabharti. Gov. In. And now the news in detail. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed confidence that in the times to come, India will fulfill the hopes and aspirations of the world. Virtually delivering State of the World Address at the World Economic Forum Davos Summit, Mr. Modi said, India is moving forward with great strength and vigor. वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम में जुटे दुनिया भर के दिग्गजों का मैं 130 करोड़ भारतीयों की तरफ से अभिनंदन करता हूं जब मैं आपसे बात कर रहा हूं तो भारत कोरोना की एक और वेव से सावधानी और सतर्कता के साथ मुकाबला कर रहा है साथ ही भारत आर्थिक क्षेत्र में भी कई आशावान रिजल्ट्स के साथ आगे बढ़ रहा है भारत में आज अपनी आजादी के पचहत्तर वर्ष होने का उत्साह भी है और भारत आज सिर्फ एक साल में ही 160 करोड़ कोरोना वैक्सीन डोज देने के आत्मविश्वास से भी भरा हुआ है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड इन दिस पीरियड ऑफ कोरोना इंडिया शोकेस्ड इट स्ट्रेंथ बाय प्रोवाइडिंग फ्री फूड टू मोर देन 80 करोड़ ऑफ इज सिटीजन He said India also focused on reforms in the right direction. Mr Modi said global economic experts have praised India's decisions. He said in this time of corona pandemic India is following the vision of one earth one health and saving crores of lives by giving essential medicines and vaccines to many countries. Corona ke samay mein humne dekha hai ki kaise Bharat one earth one health is vision par chalte hue अनेकों देशों को जरूरी दवाइयां देकर वैक्सीन देकर करोड़ों जीवन बचा रहा है आज भारत दुनिया का तीसरा सबसे बड़ा फार्मा प्रोड्यूसर है फार्मेसी टू द वर्ल्ड है आज भारत दुनिया के उन देशों में है जहां के हेल्थ प्रोफेशनल्स जहां के डॉक्टर्स अपनी संवेदनशीलता और एक्सपर्टीज से सबका भरोसा जीत रहे हैं Mr Modi said a strong democracy such as India has given the entire world a bouquet of hope the prime minister said the bouquet contains trust towards democracy technology to empower 21st century and talent and temperament of indians bharat jaisi majboot democracy ne pure vishwa ko ek khubsurat upahar diya hai ek bouquet of hope diya hai इस बुके में है हम भारतीयों का डेमोक्रेसी पर अटूट ट्रस्ट इस बुके में है 21वीं सदी को एम्पावर करने वाली टेक्नोलॉजी इस बुके में है हम भारतीयों का टेम्परामेंट हम भारतीयों का टैलेंट जिस मल्टी लिंग्वल मल्टी कल्चरल माहौल में हम भारतीय रहते हैं वो भारत ही नहीं बल्कि पूरे विश्व की बहुत बड़ी ताकत है ये ताकत संकट की घड़ी में सिर्फ अपने लिए सोचना नहीं बल्कि मानवता के हित में काम करना सिखाती है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड इट ऑल्सो हैज मोर देन एटी यूनिकॉर्न्स ऑन विच मोर देन फोर्टी वर स्टैब्लिश्ड इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन इस एड वाइल फॉलोइंग द पाथ ऑफ सेल्फ रिलायंस इंडिया फोकस इज नॉट ओनली ऑन ईजिंग द प्रोसेस but also on incentivizing investment and production he said this is the best time to invest in india mr modi said with this approach 26 billion dollars production linked incentive schemes have been implemented in 14 sectors he said today india is making policies taking decisions regarding the present as well as the goals of the next 25 years electioneering has intensified in poll bound uttar pradesh and all parties are trying to reach to their voters and party workers through different mediums senior bjp leader and prime minister narendra modi will interact with the bhartiya janata party workers from varanasi today this will be the first interaction of mr modi with party workers of his constituency after promulgation of model code of conduct in the state prime minister's interaction with party workers will take place on the namo app at around 11 am more from our correspondent Prime Minister Narendra Modi's last big program in Uttar Pradesh was on 2nd of January in Meerut and after almost 15 days he is interacting with the party workers of his state but this time in a digital mode more than 10000 booth workers from rural and urban region of Varanasi district are going to interact with Prime Minister on this occasion Ankit Chandel state head of BJP social media cell told AIR that Prime Minister will also discuss the present covid situation in the state during the interaction the party workers have been 
been asked to share their suggestions, ideas, inputs and questions during the interaction. Other political parties have also intensified their campaign. Congress leader and Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, Bhupesh Baghel, campaigned for party candidates in Gautam Budhanagar and Ghaziabad districts yesterday. Yesterday, Congress State President Ajay Kumar Lallu and National President of Ittehad Milli Council, Toki Raza addressed party workers through a digital press conference. Toki Raza also announced his support to the Congress party. On the other hand, Samajwadi party chief Akhilesh Yadav along with other farmer leaders took unsankalp at party office in Lucknow to rake up the farmer issues and remove the BJP from power. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. The Election Commission has deferred the Punjab Assembly election to the 20th of February. Earlier, the poll was scheduled to take place on the 14th of February. The Commission had received several representations from the state government, political parties and other organizations drawing attention regarding movement of a large number of devotees from Punjab to Varanasi to participate in Guru Ravidas Jayanti celebrations, which falls on the 16th of February this year. The poll body said after considering these new facts emerging out of the pre- representations, past precedents and all facts and circumstances in the matter, it has decided to reschedule the polls in the state. Three persons, including two Indian nationals, were killed in an explosion at Musafa in United Arab Emirates or UAE near Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, ADNOC's storage tanks. The fuel tank explosion was triggered by a drone attack carried out by Yemen's Houthi rebels. Three petrol tanks exploded near a storage facility, while a fire also engulfed a construction area at Abu Dhabi airport. Indian Embassy in Abu Dhabi said it is in close touch with concerned UAE authorities for further details. Talking to EIA News, Indian envoy to the United Arab Emirates, Sanjay Sudhir, confirmed that two Indians have lost their lives in the explosion and the Indian mission is working with the UAE authorities to ascertain their identities. At the oil tank facility of Adnok at Safa, which is very close to Abu Dhabi, two Indians have uh, died in an explosion. We are working very closely with the UAE authorities to find out the details, in fact, details including the identity of the two Indians who have died. Uh, as soon as we get details of the identity, we will immediately reach out to their families and provide whatever assistance is required. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed 157 crore 91 lakh mark. Health Ministry said more than 68 lakh 95,000 doses were administered yesterday. More than 50 lakh 56,000 precaution doses have been administered so far. Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia has said that over 3.5 crore children between 15 to 18 age group have received the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine since the 3rd of January. In a tweet, Mr. Mandavia congratulated all young people who have got vaccinated. He said there is amazing enthusiasm among young India for COVID-19 vaccination. Talking to AIR News, Dr. N.K. Aroda of Chairman COVID-19 Working Group said that COVID vaccination process is going on smoothly for the age group of 15 to 18 and the government is also planning to begin the vaccination of children between age group of 12 to 15. I would like to really congratulate all my countrymen. The way, the enthusiasm they have shown to get the immunization is worth emulating. The whole world is amazed at this. It is because of the COVID vaccination that despite Omicron wave, the number of people who have serious disease, who require oxygen bed or who require ICU beds and ventilators is minimal. Even today, more than 80% of COVID bed in the country are available for sick patients. Equally important and uh, encouraging is that within last two weeks, almost four crore of our young friends, 15 to 18 year old, have got their first dose. We expect that the, by the end of this month, almost all seven and a half crore children of 15 to 17 year old will get their first shot and next month they should get their second shot. We are preparing that as soon as this age group comes Complete their vaccination. 12 to 15 year old can also be given COVID vaccine. In a bilingual live phone in program Corona Jagrupta series, Dr. Rakesh Garg of Ames, New Delhi, will be with us tonight to answer the queries related to coronavirus. Listeners can ask questions to the expert from 9 30 p.m. on telephone number 011 2342 and 011 2342 
You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts by hashtag Ask AIR. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses World Economic Forum's Davos Agenda Summit, says this is the best time to invest in India. Voting in Punjab Assembly polls postponed to 20th February. Two Indians among three killed in a drone attack at Abu Dhabi Airport in UAE, Indian Embassy working with authorities to provide assistance. RBI says India's overall economic activity remains strong despite third wave of Corona. India's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 157 crore 91 lakh mark. Over 3.5 crore children in 15 to 18 age group receive first dose of vaccine. Jammu and Kashmir government issues 33.7 lakh individual health cards under Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. India all set to host AFC Women's Asian Cup 2022 from Thursday. And in badminton, PV Sindhu to start her campaign in Sayyid Modi International Tournament in Lucknow today. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Apne business ko badhane ke liye, lijiye Akashwani ka sahayog aur dijiye usse bulandiyo ke pank. Aapka business local hai ya rastriye. Akashwani deti hai upbhoktao tak pahunchne ka har vikar. और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे-बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें 8700001422 पर 8700001422 वेलकम बैक टू द मॉर्निंग न्यूज़ ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो Jammu and Kashmir government has issued 33.7 lakh individual health or sehat cards under Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. Apart from this, 9.57 lakh families have also received their health cards. Since its launch in 2020, more than 60,000 patients have been treated in 218 hospitals impaneled under the scheme. During the period, 55,993 claims have been submitted and over 41,000 claims have been settled and the total amount paid is 38.39 crore rupees. The Reserve Bank of India or RBI has said that despite Omicron's care, country's overall economic activity remains strong. In its monthly bulletin, the Apex Bank stated that amidst upbeat consumer and business confidence and an uptick in bank credit, aggregate demand conditions stay resilient. While on the supply front, the RBI noted that rubby sowing has exceeded last year's level and the normal acreage. It also mentioned that manufacturing and several categories of services remain in expansion. Commerce Industry Minister Piyush Goyal has said that the exports target of $650 billion within the current financial year is achievable. Chairing a review meeting of all major export promotion councils, EPCs, Mr. Goyal said the $400 billion target of merchandise exports is within sight and the services sector should strive for $250 billion exports. Expressing his satisfaction that India achieved $300 billion merchandise exports in the first nine months of the current financial year, April to December 2022, Mr. Goyal assured the EPCs that his ministry will do whatever it takes in handholding the EPCs and resolving their issues to attain even higher export targets in the next financial year. And now, let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. It was on 18th January that Rabindranath Tagore visited Sabarmati Ashram in 1930. Mahatma Gandhi and Rabindranath Tagore were two extremely different personalities, politically and ideologically. However, they had a great sense of mutual respect and fellowship for each other. Gandhi 
Gandhi ji was bestowed with the title of Mahatma by Rabindranath Tagore in 1915. The sense of respect that Guru Dev and Mahatma shared for each other is well reflected in the words of Rabindranath Tagore. He stopped at the thresholds of the hearts of the thousands of the dispossessed, dressed like one of their own. He spoke to them in their own language. Here was living truth at last, and not quotations from books. For this reason, Mahatma, the name given to him by the people of India, is his real name. Who else has felt like him that all Indians are his flesh and blood? In direct contact with truth, the crushed forces of the soul rise again. When love came to the door of India, that door was opened wide. At Gandhi's call, India blossomed forth to new greatness, just as once before in earlier times. When Buddha proclaimed the truth of fellow feeling and compassion among all living creatures. Today we also remember Meera Bain, a British-born follower of Mahatma Gandhi, who participated in the movement for India's independence. Born in England, Meera Bain's original name was Madeleine Slade. Fascinated by the principles of non-violence of Gandhi ji, she took India as her home and lived here for almost 34 years before returning to England. Meera Bain arrived in Ahmedabad on the 7th of November 1925, where she was received by Mahadev Desai, Vallabh Bhai Patel, and Swami Anand. Gandhi ji consented to Meera Bain's wish. to stay at Sabarmati Ashram and it was upon her arrival at the ashram that Gandhi ji gave her the nickname Meera Bain during her initial years in India Meera Bain learned Hindi and traveled to villages to understand the idea of India she became one of the close confidants of Gandhi ji in 1931 Meera Bain accompanied Gandhi ji to London for the second round table conference Meera Bain was active in spreading the spirit of non-violence. She was arrested multiple times, including during the civil disobedience, when she was detained on the charge of supplying information to Europe and America regarding conditions prevailing in India. She was again arrested during the Quit India movement when she was imprisoned in the Aga Khan Palace in Pune, along with Gandhi ji and his wife Kasturba. Following Gandhi's assassination in 1948, Meera Bain decided to stay in India. For the next 11 years, she traveled to various Indian states, took on community projects, and worked on environmental issues. On 18th January 1959, Meera Bain returned to England, and a year later moved to a house near Vienna, where she spent the remaining years of her life. In 1981. The Indian government conferred on her the Padma Vibhushan. We salute the noble soul. We also remember 11 freedom fighters from Delhi who were martyred on 18th January 1858 for participating in the defence of Delhi during the first war of Indian independence in 1857. These were. Azhar Yar Khan and Sheikh Yar Khan residents of village Khadki Sayyid Ataullah Khan resident of Phatak Habash Khan Sheikh Ghulam Shah Gulab Akbar Pathan and Sayyid Mir Ghulam residents of Kurcha Chelam Sheikh Ilahi Bakhsh Sheikh Kalamgir Bakhsh Sayyid Khuda Bakhsh resident of Lahori Gate Mir Shah Sayyid and Sayyid Sitel Shah we salute the great martyrs That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. भारत के स्वतंत्रता संग्राम में अनगिनत स्वतंत्रता सेनानियों ने अपने प्राणों की आहुति दी कुछ इतिहास में अमर हो गए और कई गुमनाम आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव के अंतर्गत पचहत्तर कड़ियों की श्रृंखला में हम उन वीरांगनाओं की बात करेंगे जिनका योगदान कभी भुलाया नहीं जा सकता 
प्रत्येक मंगलवार परिक्रमा में सुनिए अपराजिता देश की वीरांगनाओं को आकाशवाणी का सादर नमन इन टूडेज एपिसोड ऑफ अपराजिता वी विल ब्रिंग यू द स्टोरी ऑफ ग्रेट पैट्रियट एंड फ्रीडम फाइटर द्रौपदी बाय wishes to all consumers for azadi ka amrit mahotsav hallmark ensures purity of gold always purchase hallmark gold jewelry for any consumer related complaints please contact national consumer helpline toll free number 14404 issued in public interest by department of consumer affairs government of india jago grahak jago India is all set to host the football AFC Women's Asian Cup India 2022 from Thursday. Addressing a virtual press conference, AIFF President Praful Patel said the tournament will help in building women's football in India. He said all the preparations for the tournament are in place and we are in complete readiness to host it. The tournament which will be held in Mumbai, Navi Mumbai and Pune will witness 12 teams competing for the trophy. In badminton, two-time Olympic medalist PV Sindhu will look to end her title drought at the Syed Modi International Tournament that begins at the Babu Banarsi Das Indoor Stadium in Lucknow today. Sindhu will take on Tanya Hemant in the round 32 match today. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. Srinagar will have generally cloudy sky temperature will hover between 1 and 8 degrees celsius Jammu will have partly cloudy sky with haze Leh is likely to have rain or snow minimum and maximum temperature will hover between minus 13 and minus 1 degrees celsius Gilgit will have rain or snow temperature will hover between 2 and 6 degrees celsius Muzaffarabad will have partly cloudy sky becoming generally cloudy towards evening National capital Delhi will have shallow fog the minimum temperature was 10 degrees celsius while the maximum will be around 18 degrees in mumbai minimum temperature was 23 degrees celsius while the maximum will be around 34 degrees and now an overview of today's newspapers all the dailies today have noted prime minister's online special address at the davos world economic forum quoting the pm the tribune writes best time to invest in india while the hindu mentions the prime minister pitching india as a country helping the world deal with pandemic the pioneer reports covid vaccination for 12 to 14 years from march as drive to vaccine 15 to 18 years with both doses to accomplish by february end to incentivize farmers income economic times says sops for agri value addition and backward linkages on cards in the upcoming budget Daily tally of uh, new COVID cases in city drops 50% in 4 days showing a downward spiral of COVID cases in Delhi reports the Times of India Delhi gets first electric bus CM says 300 more by April states the Indian Express Before we end the bulletin a reminder of today's question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz Name the American journalist who reported about the British brutality perpetrated against peaceful satyagrahis at Darsana Salt Depot during the civil disobedience movement. His reporting was credited for helping turn world opinion against British colonial rule of India. WhatsApp your response on 8826546262 or through email on amritmahotsavquiz at prasarbharti.gov.in. Celebrate 75 years of India's independence by participating in Amrit Mahotsav quiz with AIR News. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses World Economic Forum's Davos Agenda Summit says this is the best time to invest in India. Voting in Punjab Assembly polls postponed to 20th of February. Two Indians among three killed in a drone attack at Abu Dhabi airport in UAE Indian embassy working with authorities to provide assistance RBI says India's overall economic activity remains strong despite third wave of corona India's covid vaccination coverage crosses 157 crore 91 lakh mark Over 3.5 crore children in 15 to 18 age group receive first dose of vaccine Jammu and Kashmir government issues 33.7 lakh individual health cards under Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana. India all set to host AFC Women's Asian Cup 2022 from Thursday and in badminton PV Sindhu to start her campaign in Syed Modi International Tournament in Lucknow today. And with that we end the morning news. Have a nice day.